Winter storm warning in effect for heavy snow. Those planning travel in the warned area should be prepared for hazardous conditions and plan accordingly. So what we did already is we figured out the strength of the snowpack. So this, in this case, the snowpack is really strong. We had to hit it really hard in order to make it fail. But when it failed, that failure propagated all the way across the column. So it had moderate energy or enough energy to sustain propagation. So if I could get something to fail, it may propagate and lead to an avalanche. So I know the strength and the energy of the snowpack. The other thing that I look at is the structure of the snowpack, or is there a path of least resistance? And when I look at a path of least resistance, there's a few things I look at. One is the hardness, and does the hardness change? And in snow science, we talk about hardness from fist to forefinger to one finger to pencil to knife. And what it is is two to three pounds of pressure that I'm applying to the snowpack until I can actually get my hand, my fist, or my forefingers through that snowpack. The threshold that some folks have thrown out is when you push on your nose when it starts to hurt, that's the amount of pressure. Or if you think about a dry bar and a pint of beer and your forefingers, if you push that across the bar, that is the amount of force. I learned that from Rod Newcomb, that, that, 78 years old. I understand that one. Most ski bums do understand that one. Great, so when I look at my weakest layer, the layer that I'm most concerned about is down here at the bottom, right? So when I look at the bottom of this snowpack, Above that weakest layer, here, I've got one finger hardness. Below, in this faceted snow, I've got about this four finger hardness. So I've got a step or more of a hardness difference. The other thing that I look at is the grain sizes and if they change. So small grains bond to small grains really well. Big grains will bond to big grains better, but small grains trying to bond to big grains is the weakest bond. So if I've got a millimeter or more grain size difference between my grains, these tiny ones above, and these larger two millimeter facets below, again, I've got another structural weakness. If I have a persistent grain type, which means a faceted crystal facets or depth hoar, or surface hoar, they just have longer memories, they take longer to change, so they get a strike against them. If they're in the top meter of the snowpack, it's another structural weakness because it's what I can affect as a skier or rider. And in this case, this is, I believe, 90 to 95 centimeters down. So it's in the top meter of the snowpack. And then if my weak layer is thin or less than 10 centimeters, it's another structural weakness. And the reason is uh, thin weak layers concentrate shear stress more than thick weak layers. If you think of a thick weak layer, I can stress it in shear and it can absorb more of it until it fails versus a really thin layer, I can't move it as much until it fails. So in this case, when I look at the structure, I've got four out of five of those, what we call them lemons, four out of five lemons. So I've got my weak layers within the top meter of the snowpack. There's a hardness change of one step or more. There's a grain size change of one millimeter or more, and it's a persistent grain type. It's facets, or rounding facets in this case. Um, the only lemon it doesn't have is that it's a thick weak layer rather than a thick weak layer. So I've got strong snow. It takes a lot of force to make it fail, but when it fails, it will propagate. So I've got quality two with propagation, and then I've got a really weak structure. And with that really weak structure, this year, we've, I've seen this all over the West, and it is something that has caused me to back off and choose way more conservative, mellower terrain. Because if I think about being in the backcountry, the one piece of the puzzle I can control is the terrain that I travel in. So I'm backing off, traveling on slopes that are lower angle, 30 degrees, less than 30 degrees, um, to make sure that I don't trigger something.